Hi guys, Creative Katie, Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my channel and another art journal tutorial. This is a great one for beginners. Lots of lessons to be learned. So I'm starting out and I'm picking three colors. I'm picking light magenta, yellow, and hooker's green. Now, I'm just showing you that, you know, when the tube is, you think you're all done, if you cut it open, there is oodles of paint left in there. So I'm just going to afterwards scrape this out and put it in a little container that I buy at the dollar store. And then you can use every little last bit of your paint. So the page is a raw page. This is my Canson Mixed Media. And I am mixing the paint blending the colors on the page. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little bit of gesso onto my sponge. And what that does is give me other tones of the same color. It softens it, it makes the paints more opaque, and you get a different look. And I like adding that in there. It's an easy way of adding interest to your page. So I started with the magenta at the top, mixed in the yellow with the magenta, then I have some straight yellow, and then I'm going to add the green, all with a little bit of the gesso. I'm not too worried about sponge marks or imperfections at this stage because I know I'm going to do, be doing a lot of stenciling and adding a focal image to this. Although at this point in time, I don't know where this page is going. And when you don't know, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't create. Just start. Here I just picked colors. I said, okay, I'm going to do this and we'll see where it leads. Somewhere along that creative process, you're going to get another idea or another idea and things come together. And until it does, just enjoy the process. I just wanted to throw color on a page, play with it, and see where it would go. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. I show my works in progress. All my videos get posted there. You can find me at Creative Katie. I'm just working at getting a nice blend of colors, some separation on here. And I was inspired by a gel print that I had done that I absolutely love the colors. This ended up looking nothing like it. So I grabbed this stencil. This is called gauze and I'm adding white through the stencil. And quite often when I start stenciling, I grab a stencil and put white through it. It just kind of pushes back those background colors and gets things going. Now, spoiler alert, while I'm loving the stencil on here, and I will have to come back and use this stencil where it actually shows. At the end, we don't see many of the layers that we see happening right now. but I'm loving that. I could have and should have maybe left it at this stage. And if you're doing that and you regret, oh, I wish I had left it, write yourself a note so that you know you wanna try that again. Playing with the stencil, I was suffering from a lot of, I don't know what to do while I was doing this process. So I'm grabbing out a stencil, trying it, throwing, putting it back down, trying something else. And I left this all in to show you that is part of the normal artistic creative process. So again, I'm looking for a stencil, but I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I honestly don't know where I want to go with this. So I'm additioning, I'm pulling out stencils, additioning, trying. So I grab this stencil, which I believed is 
circle tiles. And I'm putting some of the pink and I'm using the same colors that I have in the background and I'm spreading it out across the page. This one's good for adding a little bit of detail, a little bit of pattern, not a lot. And here I'm using the green. So again, same stencil, two different colors. What I'm thinking right now is I'm not sure I like what's happening. But because I've done so many pages, I know that if I just keep going, add more layers, it'll be okay. And worst case scenario, I absolutely do not like what ends up. I can put a coat of gesso or collage papers over top of it and continue. But I can honestly say at this point, this is not sparking joy. And again, trying out different stencils, additioning. You can see the indecision. Spoiler alert, I end up with a page that I absolutely love. So don't give up. This is Cosmic Swirl. And since I don't like what I have behind, I'm picking a stencil with lots of open space, which means when I stencil through it, I'm going to cover a lot of what's in the background. Well, that was my thinking anyways. What's the saying? Fake it till you make it. So I just keep going. I think sometimes one of the things we do is we stop too soon. And if, if a page is going south, you've got nothing to lose. That's a great time to experiment, to try something very different. And as you can see, I'm still additioning. I figure, oh, I'm going to go big and bold. I want something with open spaces. But nothing's really catching my interest. And yes, I could have cut out a lot of that. But I know when you're starting out, you have those thoughts about a page. And you think somehow it's something in you that's lacking that you can't do it. And you're no different than anybody else. I've done hundreds of art journal pages and iCADs and different things, and you still go through that. So I grabbed this fan flower stencil. This is a cake and cookie stencil. And I'm grabbing my white. I want to push back. I'm not happy with what's going on in the background, so I'm pushing back all of that pattern, all of that stuff, pushing it back, trying to save this page at this point. It does push back a lot of it or neutralizes it, I guess. So that's a good thing. So if you have a, pa a thing and it's a, a background and it's a, too busy or it's not what you like, you want to 
basically doing a whitewash by stenciling with white. So it's about here that I start thinking to myself, okay, I think I'm onto something. I'm liking what I see. I've neutralized the background. I can make this work. So I'm going all over with that pattern, bits and pieces of it. I love how it softened those colors, pushed back some of the pattern that I wasn't exactly fond of. But now everything that I've done really does add to the finished product. The page would not be the page without every, every layer, every detail. So the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So I grabbed this wheat stock stencil, and this is the 12 inch one, and the black modeling paste. Now I love this black modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop. It is oh, just like butter, it goes on. And I'm using a key card to put it on, which is one of my favorite ways. And I'm putting this on. I'm going for contrast. I've got a light colored background and I'm covering up a lot of it with this stencil. This is a huge stencil on this 10 by 7 substrate. But of course right now you can't see what's happening. So it's kind of when you put the black modeling paste on such a large area, it's a little bit of blind faith that it's going to work out. And two things are going to happen. I'm either going to love it or I'm going to not love it. <laughs> the moment of truth, fingers crossed. And I love it. The pastel soft background against the stark of the white of the modeling paste. Now there were a couple places where the modeling paste kind of seeped under my stencil. I scraped it off and you can see where it's kind of colored the paper. And now I'm going in with gesso and the colors and just painting that out. So I just used a palette knife and scraped it and now I'm just colorizing it. So you can fix any mistakes. And I do go back in. I'm not sure if I caught that. Now I'm doing putting a coat of gesso first, and then I do go in and dab some of that green or pink color, just so it doesn't stand out and just mixes with the background. There, I'm adding a little bit of color. This is where those fine line brushes come in handy because you can get into tiny little areas. Alternatively, I would just leave it because it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was. As I said, there's always a way to fix what you think is so, so wrong. I have some magenta on the makeup sponge and I'm just going around and edging. Working on those details, adding green where there's green, pink where there's pink. Using what's on my palette. And as you can see, I am not a one of those neat creators. <laughs> By the time I'm done, it looks like a bomb has been set off in my, in my studio. I've got everything out. I've got paint everywhere. Creativity is messy. What can I say?
Got some black paint. I think I'm going to shade around the outside edges. I've had a real creative spurt, so I've been making, doing a lot of videos, which means if they sit for a while before I edit them, sometimes I forget on what happens where. Now, instead of using the black acrylic paint, I decided I'm going to show another way that you can shade. This is a General's charcoal pencil, and it's the soft one. And I know you can get these on Amazon. You can also get them from Michaels and other places. I love how easy this is to, to blend. You just put it down and then smudge it with your fingers. Just be careful not to take those fingers and put it somewhere where you don't want it because it'll smudge there too. Framing this in black really worked because of the modeling paste that I used for the wheat. There's a Shopify link in the description box from the Crafters Workshop as well as a discount code should you be interested in the modeling paste or some of their stencils. When you go through my link, you're basically saying, Creative Katie sent me. Now I'm trying out sentiments, and I have some from my short and sweet pack, which has some of half of the sentiments are black background with white letters. And you can see the difference here, how what it made. Now, when I, I've lived in Saskatchewan my entire life until I retired to Vancouver Island, and I loved watching the wheat stalks in the fall and even in the summer when the wind would blow them. And it, it was something that gave me balance and calmed me. And so that's where I'm going with this, the sentiments. And I left a lot of the black around it because I liked how it looked. And then I decided to add a sentiment on the bottom as well. These ones I printed out just on regular copy paper. I get my copy paper from Costco and it's actually a heavier weight than most copy papers and it's bright white. It handles water really, really well. Whereas some of the regular cheap copy paper that you might get at Walmart or Staples would pill a little bit if you got too much water on it. And it says restore. And I got a little bit of that charcoal on there. Remember that that will come up with the water. Removing the tape that I keep so I have a straight edge and keep all the gunk out of my coils. I absolutely love this page. It was quite the journey. Thank you for sticking with me to get to the end. Here are some close-ups. Give me a thumbs up. Share this with your creative friends. Subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time.